welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So today's Thursday, which means it is Booklist Thursday. Booklist Thursday is something I do with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. We come to you every Thursday with some sort of thoughts, ideas, recommendations, something bookish related. So today we have a really interesting one. So we took a look at our um, Goodreads and all of the books that we currently own that are on our shelves that we have not read yet. And we rated them by, or we sorted them by highest rating to lowest rating. So these are the five highest rated books that we have on our TBR shelves. Very interesting because four of them are historical fiction. Like, didn't expect that to happen. So I'm going to share mine with you from lowest, lowest highest rated to highest highest rated. I hope that made sense. So here we go. All right, first one up, told you, historical fiction galore. We have The Paris Secret. This is by Natasha Lester. This is a an arc I actually got a while ago. I believe someone at our book club signed up for, um, it was a group she found where book clubs could sign up to do reviews of specific books. And this was the book that was sent to us. I didn't read it. Uh, but it is for readers of Lilac Girls and Tattooists of Auschwitz, so two books I absolutely love. And yes, yeah, so we have three timelines, it looks like. We have England in 1939, Paris in 1947, and then present day. So in our 1939 time period in England, we have the Penrose sisters, couldn't be more different. Their sky is daring and a brash pilot, and Liberty is the one to defy her at every turn. Even if women aren't allowed in the Royal Air Force, Skye is determined to help with the war effort. She's thrilled when it reunites her with her childhood soulmate, Nicholas. Love a good love story. She's less than thrilled to learn Nicholas is now engaged to a French woman named Marjo. So then we have Paris 1947. Designer Christian Dior unveils his glamorous first collection of a war world weary of war and grief. Uh, he names his de debut fragrance, fragrance Miss Dior in tribute to his beloved sister, Catherine, who forged a friendship with Skye and Margeau through her work with the French Resistance. Present day, we have fashion conservator Kat discovers a priceless collection of Dior gowns in her grandmother's vacant cottage. Ooh. As she delves into the mystery of their origin, Kat begins to doubt everything she thought she knew about her beloved grandmother. All right, I'm game. Priceless Dior Collection reveals a heartbreaking story of wartime friendship, love, and sacrifice. And this one on Goodreads has 4.47 for this average rating. It's pretty solid. All of these are pretty solid. Next one I have is the only fantasy on here and the one I've been nervous about reading it to the point that I almost got rid of it. <sighs> But it's Sarah J. Mass. It's Crescent, um, Crescent City. This is the Crescent City series. This is House of Earth and Blood. Um, I've read, where is she? Oh, she's way up here. Um, the Akator, the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. Loved. Like, those are staying on my shelf. Throne in Glass was fine. Didn't finish it and really don't care to finish it. And those are in my get rid of pile. So I wasn't sure what to do with this, but I'm like, hey, I spent the money. It can fit on my shelf. We'll leave it. Um, I know Sarah has read this and she did really enjoy it, but we're talking, I mean, this is chunky, my friends. Um, what is it even about? But first of all, gorgeous. Um, we have Bryce had the perfect life working hard all day and partying all night. Um, until a demon murdered her closest friends, leaving her bereft, wounded, and alone. When the accused is behind bars, but the crimes start start up again, Bryce finds herself at the heart of the investigation. She'll do whatever it takes to avenge their deaths. Okay. So, I mean, since it's made this video and it made the cut, we're going to keep it on the shelf. We're going to add it to our list. This also had a 4.48 average rating. So, not too bad. All right. Back to the historical fiction. Um, next one I have is the test is the violinist of Auschwitz. This is by Ellie Midwood. Such a pretty cover. Um, Auschwitz 1943. Uh, every day is a fight for first survival. Alma um, has the number is an inmate number five zero three eight one. 
Uh, she's cooped up with thousands of others, torn from loved ones, trapped in a maze of barbed wire, and everyday people disappear never to be seen again. The tr this tragic reality couldn't be further from Alma's previous life, an esteemed violinist. Her performances left her audience spellbound, and when the Nazis descended on Europe, none of that can save her. When the head of the women's camp appoints Alma as the conductor of the orchestra, performing for prisoners, trudging to work as well as the highest ranking Nazis, she refuses. They can kill me, but they won't make me play. Yet she soon realizes the power this position offers. She can provide starving girls with extra rations and save many from the clutches of death. And this is how she meets Miklos, the talented pianist. Surrounded by despair, they find happiness in joint rehearsals, secret notes, and concerts they give side by side, all while praying that this will end one day. But in Auschwitz, the very air is tainted with loss and tragedy is the only certainty. Can their love survive? So that's on there. What is my rating? Four and a half. Average rating of four and a half stars. That's solid. I'm going to have to give this one a try sooner than later. This would make a really good try a chapter vlog, I think. I think. Okay, next one. Kelly Rimmer, not surprised that she made this list. This is The Things We Cannot Say. This was, I would say, is probably her most popular book and the one that I haven't read. Um, this one's 1942. Europe remains in the relentless grip of war. Just beyond the tents of the Russian refugee camp, she calls home. A young woman speaks her wedding vows. It's a decision that will alter her destiny, and it's a lie that will remain buried until the next century. Definitely interested in this one. Loving it. Like, I'm really starting to think a try a chapter vlog with these books would be good. What do you think? Oh, average rating on Goodreads for things we cannot say. 4.51. Still, yeah. And my highest rated book on my TBR shelf, according to Goodreads, has a rating of 4.54 average stars. Another historical fiction. We have The Light in Hidden Places by Sharon Cameron. Um, 1943. I feel like these are all around the same time period too. It's just so, of all the books that I haven't read, it's just kind of crazy. We're just going with the statistics. Um, 1943, uh, and for four years, 16 year old Stefania has been working for a family in their grocery store in Poland, singing her way into their lives and hearts. She's even made a promise to one of their sons, a betrothed, betrothal, betrothal? They must keep secret since she's Catholic and he's Jewish. But everything changes when the German army invades. The family is forced into the ghetto and she's alone in the occupied city, the only person left to care for Helena, her six-year-old sister. And then comes the knock at the door. Um, let's see, Izio, which is her betrothed, his brother Max has jumped from the train headed to a concentration camp. Stefania and Helena, her sister, make an extraordinary decision to hide Max, which is the brother, and eventually 12 more Jews. Then they must wait every day for the next knock on the door, the one that will mean death. When the knock finally comes, it's two SS officers um, basically taking her house for the German army. With two Nazis living below, 13 Jews hidden above, and a little sister by her side, she has one more choice to make. Don't know what that's going to be. It says a gripping page turner. I feel like this would be a page turner for sure. So here it is. I must have bought it at Pearl Street Books in Lacrosse. Oh, I did. I remember that. So this is highest rated on my shelf. Also a Reese Withers, uh, Reese's YA book club. So maybe it is. It must be YA. It is published by Scholastic. That would make sense. But that one has a 4.54. I think I said that. So those are five books, <laughs> five highest rated on my shelves. Let me keep them over to the side and do a little try chapter and see if any one of them really pulls me in. Um, but just really interesting to see that it is four historical fictions and a fantasy. Very interesting. Anyways, um, head over to Sarah's channel and see what five books she has. I'm interested to see if they come from a similar genre or not probably more fantasy than anything, but see what she has for us today. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you next time. Bye.